All right, getting through it. On to the next. So this time we're going to work with the sequence. The sequence is going to be given. And then we're going to do a couple of things to see what's up. So first, here's a sequence. Negative 1, 6, 13, 20. And then for part A, we want to just find the next two terms of the sequence. Second one, we're going to find a recurrence relation, which means we need A1. And then what's going to happen for the next? And lastly, we're going to find an explicit formula. And it really should say for the nth term of the sequence. All right, let's go. Let's go. So let's see if we can't find the next term. So really, a good game is always to look and be like, well, what's the gap in between? Well, that gap is 7. That gap is 7. Oh. We're just adding 7. We're just, we're just adding 7 to each of those. So I think we can find the next two terms. Let's just write it out. Or like it's negative 1, 6. 13, 20, and we're just adding 7. So is that 27, 34, and we found the next few terms. Okay, that's no big deal. And now a recurrence relationship. Okay. Okay. So that's that. we got to find some a sub 1 first, or some. We want to figure out what's a sub n plus 1. What is it? And we know that a sub 1 is equal to negative 1. Look, it's the first freaking term, so write it there. Now, it doesn't have to be a sub 1. It could be a sub 0, and you're going to see that quite a bit. So I'm actually just going to change it and be like, nope, we're going to call this the 0th term. Just so we can see. Be like, that's the 0th term. No biggie. It's negative 1. But since we have a recurrence relationship, didn't we just add 7? Didn't we... I'm pretty sure we just added 7. So if we say our a sub n plus 7, where our first term, or the 0th term, is negative 1. This would work if I wrote a sub 1. It's the same thing, but I just want you to see. You could start at 0. You could start at negative 5. You could start wherever the frick you want to. But we could start at 0 or 1. I think that makes it a little bit better. So, hmm. What could we do? What could we do? How, how could we find an explicit formula for this? And I'm going to stick with it. We're, we're with the zeroth term. Huh. Well, let, let's try plugging things in. This usually helps a little bit. So I'm going to be like, all right, so a sub 1 was equal to a sub naught plus 7. Okay. And then a sub 2 would actually be, now I'm going to skip this, Zero, and that would be 7 plus 7, right? I'm skipping the first term, and then the third would be the first term plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, right? And then as we go, we're like, well, wait, oh, I think there's some other ways we could write this. This, we could say, all right, well, maybe a sub n plus 1 for this one was a sub n plus 1, 7 times 1. And then for this one, we look for like a sub n plus 1, that's a sub n plus 7 times 2. And then a sub n plus 1 is a sub n times 3. Oh, wait a second. Do you, do you see it? Do you see it? I think we could just say that any a sub n, any a sub n, would just be our first term. And I keep writing in a naught. What's a naught? What did we start with? That's negative 1. So it looks like it's negative 1 plus, huh, for our, actually I wrote this in improperly. I shouldn't do it that way. Oh, see, I wrote it in wrong. See, I'm changing little indices here and being like, oh, wait a second. Oh, to get the second term, we'd have to multiply it by 2. To get the third term, oh, we'd have to multiply it by 3. So we wrote in our first term, and then we just go, well, I think this is just a 7 times n. And there's a formula that you could get it in for. So if we wanted to know the 
That's the zero with first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Well, let's plug it in and see if our formula works. We say a sub five is equal to negative one plus seven times five. Negative one plus 35, that's equal to 34. Hey, it matched. Our formula worked. Let's do another. This time I won't explain quite as much, but I'll try to explain a little bit. So now let's say we have some other one, some different sequence. I'm gonna call it B sub N. And we're going to say that this is 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, comma, dot, dot, dot. All right, let's go. So what we want to do is look at the gaps. I'm telling you, looking at the gaps in between them. I'm pretty sure you can see we're just doubling the term from before. Like twice 3 is 6, twice 6 is 12, twice 12 is 24, twice 24 is 48. But if you look at the gaps, 3, 6, 12. Wait a second, 24. Look at how the gaps are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So there must be some sort of multiplication or exponential. Well, whatever, let's just get into it. So we're going to run the same thing. I want to know the next two terms. So we got 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. And we're just doubling things up here. So twice 48 is 96. Twice 96, what is that? That's 192. All right, cool. So we found ourselves the next two terms. Now, as we've done before, let's find a recurrence formula. And this isn't bad. We just said all you're doing is doubling the term from before, taking that piece out. So we could say, well, huh, I'm going to stick with the B. We could say that B sub N plus 1, because we're not calling it A, I think that's just twice whatever was from before. Yeah, I think that's what it is. And what was our first term? It was three. All right, see that first term. So we wrote that in. This is three. Start at three and just double it for the next term. There is a recursive formula or a recurrence relation. Sorry, I'm not used to that term. I'm trying to get used to it. So that works. Notice how I wrote it as b sub 1. You could have wrote it as b sub 0. Doesn't make any difference. Our index starts wherever the hell you want to. 0 or 1. Don't choose anything else. Now the tough part. To get an explicit formula. Hmm. So, I'm just going to write this down. a naught. Or, oops. Did I write a naught? b naught. Our first term is 3. Cool. Our second term is three times two, or our first term, depending on your indices. All right, didn't we do that, three times two? Our next term is three times two times two. Three times two times two times two. There's a formula. We got this thing. We got this thing. This looks like for any B sub N, the three is on each of them, yes? They all have a three. Now the first term is two to the zeroth. You know anything raised to the zeroth power is one. Then we have two to the first, then we have two squared, then we have two cubed. It's three times two to the n. For n is equal to zero, one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Goes on forever. You catching the pattern? That this is just a puzzle? It's just a big game? We'll get better with this as we see more problems. At the beginning, this can be very challenging. But I think we're going to get through this thing. We'll do it. Let's go. All right, I think we'll just have one more. We'll talk about the limit of the sequence in our next one, and then we're going to move on to more sequences. Shoot, 10, 1, 10, 2, 10, 3. We're just going to learn about sequences and series. Getting ready. And then 10, 4 through 10, 7 is going to be what we call our tests. We're going to have a bunch of different tests and then which ones we choose. So, all right, I will see you soon.